Fritigan get his evidence from? Well, a network of missionary hospitals set up throughout Sub-Saharan Africa uncovered what may be one of the most important advances in health, according to one of our most preeminent medical figures of the last century, Dr. Dennis Burkett, the fact that many of our major and commonest diseases were universally rare, like heart disease. You know, the African population of Uganda, for example, coronary artery disease is almost non-existing. You say, wait a second, our number one killer almost non-existent, what were they eating? Well, they were eating lots of vegetables and grains and greens, and their protein almost exclusively from plant sources, and they had the cholesterol levels to prove it, very similar to what one sees in kind of modern day plant eaters. So wait a second, maybe they were just dying early from something else, never lived long enough to get heart disease. No, here's age-matched heart attack rates in Uganda versus St. Louis. Out of 632 autopsies, Uganda only one myocardial infarction. Out of 632 age and gender match autopsies in Missouri, 136 myocardial infarctions, more than 100 times the rate of our leading killer. In fact, they were so blown away, went back, did another 800 autopsies. Uganda still just that one small healed infarct, meaning it wasn't even the cause of death. Out of 1,427 patients, less than one in a thousand. Whereas here, heart disease is an epidemic. Right? Atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, is a disease that begins in childhood. By age 10, nearly all kids raised on the standard American diet already have fatty streaks building up inside of their arteries, the first stage of the disease. Then these streaks can turn into plaques in our 20s, get worse in our 30s, and then can start killing us off. In our heart, it's called a heart attack. In our brain, the same disease can cause a stroke. So if there's anyone here this evening older than age 10, <laughs> then it's not a question of whether or not to eat healthy to prevent heart disease. It's whether you want to reverse the heart disease you likely already have whether you know it or not. But is that even possible? You know, researchers took people with heart disease, put them on the kind of plant-based diet, followed by populations that did not get heart disease. Their hope was, hey, maybe we can slow the disease down a little bit. Maybe even stop it. But instead, something miraculous happened. As soon as people stopped eating artery clogging dyes, their bodies were able to start dissolving some of that plaque away, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery, suggesting their bodies want to be healthy all along, but were just never given the chance. That remarkable improvement in blood flow there on the left to the heart muscle itself was after just three weeks of plant-based nutrition. Let me share with you what's been called the best kept secret in all of medicine. The best kept secret in medicine is that sometimes under the right conditions the body can actually heal itself. You know, if you, uh, you know, whack your shin really hard on a coffee table, something can get red hot, painful, swollen, inflamed, but will heal naturally if you just stand back, let your body work its magic. Right? But what if you kept whacking your shin the same place day after day. In fact, three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, it never healed. You'd go to your doctor, you'd be like, oh, my shin hurts. They'd be like, no problem. Whip out their pad, write a prescription for painkillers. Right? You're still whacking your shin three times a day. Oh, still really hurts like heck, but oh, it feels so much better with those pain pills on board. Thank heavens for modern medicine. It's like when heart patients take nitroglycerin, right? Tremendous relief of chest pain, but not doing anything to treat the underlying cause of the disease. Our body wants to come back to health if we let it, but if we keep re-damaging ourselves three times a day, we may never heal. It was like smoking. One of those amazing things I learned in all my years of medical training was that within about 15 years of stopping smoking, your lung cancer risk approaches that of a lifelong non-smoker. 
Isn't that amazing? Right? Like, your lungs can clear out all that tar, and eventually, it's almost as if you never started smoking at all. And every morning of our smoking life, that healing process started to wham! First cigarette of the day. Re-injuring our lungs with every puff, just like we can re-injure our arteries with every bite, when all we had to do all along, the miracle cure, is to just stand back, get out of the way, stop re-damaging ourselves, and let our body's natural healing processes bring us back towards health. The human body is a self-healing machine, unless you're poking it with a fork three times a day. Right? Now, sure, you can choose moderation and hit yourself with a smaller hammer. <laughs> but why beat yourself up at all? This is nothing new. American Heart Journal, 1977. Cases like Mr. F.W. here, heart disease so bad, couldn't even make it to the mailbox. Started eating healthier. A few months later, he was climbing mountains. No pain. All right. Now, there are these fancy new classes of anti-angina drugs on the market now. Cost thousands of dollars a year, but at the highest dose, may be able to extend exercise duration as long as 33 and a half seconds. <laughs> it does not look as though those choosing the drug route are going to be climbing mountains anytime soon. <laughs> See, plant-based diets aren't just safer and cheaper. They can work better because you're treating the actual cause of the disease. When Dr. Dean Ornish published his landmark lifestyle heart trial proving with something called quantitative angiography, that indeed heart disease could be reversed. Arteries opened up without drugs, without surgery, um, uh, in the majority of patients, uh, with just a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors. I assumed this was going to be the game changer. I mean, my family had seen it with their own eyes, but here it was in black and white, published in some of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, yet nothing happened. Uh, I said, wait a second, if effectively the cure to our number one killer could get lost down some rabbit hole and ignored, what else might there be in the medical literature that could help my patients, uh, but just didn't have a you know, corporate budget driving its promotion? 